as for Tank's resume, I give Tank some credit on his resume. And I'm, I know a lot of people are like, but he's not fighting any like real champions, this and that. I don't care if Leo Santa Cruz moved up. Leo Santa Cruz was that dude. And I thought until he got knocked out, I thought Leo fought pretty decently. I thought he fought pretty decently. Mario Barrios, that's when Tank moved up to 140. And whether you like him or not, like this guy was a former champ, right? Isaac Cruz, look at all the hype on Isaac Cruz until he recently lost. A lot of hype on Isaac Cruz. And they gave him a lot of credit because that fight went the distance. Of course, something happened with Tank's hand in that fight. But nonetheless, that was a young fighter in Pitbull Cruz that was a dangerous fight because he had power. And Tank ended up going the distance, but he still got it done. Roly, Roly, Tank has said that I believe Roly is one of the hardest punchers he's, a, he's ever fought. Right. Roly has hadn't been boxing for a long time, but once again, the power aspect, he ends up fighting Ryan Garcia. And at the time I was like, yo, this is kind of a 50, 50 fight. Like I was on the post with you, Brian. And you know, I was like, this is a good fight because Ryan has the power and the speed. Of course, he didn't really have the accolades at that point, but still a young fighter at the same time that has the capability. And there was a lot of hype on Ryan as well during that time. And Frank Martin, I think is a good fight. And we can go back and we can be like, well, Gamboa was old. That's not his fault. You know what I mean? It's not Tank's fault that Gamboa was old. I think people want the bigger names, and I totally get that. But if there were real negotiations happening with him and Loma, and that was reported, and Loma's like, yo, I got to take some time off, that's not on Tank, dude. So Tank, this is a stay busy fight for tank if that's how you want to call it and i'm not taking any way taking anything away from lamont roach because i think this is actually a pretty good fight but if this means that we get tank and loma sometime in the spring next year i'm okay with that i'm okay with that i'm not counting on that but we'll see um if tank wins this fight this won't happen in all likelihood but if tank wins this fight and retires would you feel like good with his resume no so I don't think you can make that argument. I, I I wouldn't feel good with his with his resume because I think I think there needs to be that one fight that cements it because there's too many questions. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like when LeBron won those chips with the Miami Heat. We know how you feel about the Miami Heat. <laughs> Everyone was saying, "Well, he did it with Wade and Bosch." But he if he really retired then and didn't get the Cleveland and didn't, one, didn't yeah. get the Cleveland one, that's kind of like stained. Where right? where you're kind of like, "Oh, I don't know." But he got that one in Cleveland, even mm -hmm. though Kyrie and Kevin Love were there. This is not a basketball podcast, but he got it done in Cleveland. Don't say, don't, okay. don't, don't, no, don't. no, 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 no. Let me do that. Okay, let me do that. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, you win a, you win a title say. with help. Everyone has help. <laughs> Everyone has help, but I, I mean, at least acknowledge it. At least acknowledge that Kyrie dropped 40 twice in that series. Let's not do this. Okay, exactly. Um, this is not the time. We didn't yeah, even get into Ky Devontae Ky Adams. Ky <laughs> um, look, <laughs> I think I think Lamont Roach is one of the best in his weight class. The problem is his weight class is super featherweight, not lightweight. So this is another example that is a strike against him. And I think Lamont Roach is very good. Like, I think he's as accomplished – um, leading up to this fight, as Frank Martin was, probably more so, actually, because he actually won a title, like won a world title, um, against a really good fighter in Hector Luis Garcia. But And Hector Luis Garcia, who was finding success against Tank. That was a Tank, good fight before his yeah. eye messed up. Like, that that was a solid fight, and I don't care what anybody says. Hector Luis Garcia is a good fighter, dude. Hector's good, man. Hector's good. Um, I, I think Hector's one of the more legit names on Tank's resume, which... You know, people would say like, oh, that means he doesn't have a great resume. But just quickly, just going back to it, like, all right, Lamont Roach, okay, he, it's another guy coming up, whatever. Frank Martin, you could say that was before Frank Martin was ready type of type of thing. Like, people would say that. I would also say Frank Martin, who's sneakily, like, almost 30 years old. Yo, he, so, Frank like, needed that fight. He, he like, kind of, like, it was kind of like a now or never thing. Um But f one of the better guys in the weight class, but also coming off what we all thought should have been a loss uh, in the previous fight. So is that a cherry pick? I don't know if I'd go that far, but you know, it, it was strategic and Frank Martin probably also was going to get that opportunity anyway, uh, regardless. Um, Ryan Garcia, <clears throat> hats off, 
Also, though, and you pointed this out because you didn't love this, there was a weight clause. There was a rehydration clause. Ryan Garcia said he felt drained. Um, you know, there was some craftiness there, and he ends up stopping Ryan Garcia. If that fight took place at 140, I'm sure it'd probably be a different story, but Tank insists insists that he doesn't feel comfortable in that weight class, even though I think he would probably beat everybody at 140. <laughs> but well, that's he- that's another thing. Quickly, I just want to say a lot of people are like, well, he's been at 135 for such a long time. There's weight classes for a reason. You don't have to move up if you don't no, you, don't. you don't feel comfortable. But, but I, like it, he if you're bringing if you're draining, if you're being accused of draining somebody, then I, I think people are going to hold that up as a sort of counter anyway. It's it's one of those situations going back to if Tank retired today, would I be okay with his resume? I still think he's the best lightweight in the world. I th- still think he's one of the most entertaining boxers in the world. He's on the pound for pound list for me. He's knocking everyone out. And I'll say one thing, and I made this comparison with Brian off air. Before Bud took care of Spence, everyone talked about his resume and how his resume wasn't as elite at, as Spence's. And look what happened to Spence in the ring against Bud Crawford. Got annihilated. Got dominated. Right? And now people aren't even talking about Spence, which is like, I don't think that's right because he was one of the best at 147. But for Tank, people look at his resume and they're like, oh my God, there's questions. Like he wouldn't be able to go toe-to-toe with, you know, Shakur or Loma or if he moved up to 140. Like, I don't think he's that good. No, Tank is that good. Put him in a situation where he is fighting a big name like that, and we'll see. But just remember, this is the same narrative that they had about Bud. The exact same narrative going into that fight with Spence. And I think that it's kind of the same for Tank. Because they're saying he doesn't have the names on the resume. But guess what? He's stopping and knocking out pretty much everybody. So it's it's similar in that sense. Because when Bud moved up to 147, he was stopping everybody. So I think there's a little bit of similarities there for sure. So before Ryan Garcia, you have Hector Luis Garcia, who we just told you, like, we both think he's really good. Um, Another champion moving up from 130, uh, similar to Lamont Roach was, um, but also really good. Like, I think Lamont Roach is a really good fighter. And I I think Lamont Roach actually might have some early success in this fight because guys tend to do that when they're skilled enough in tank fights before tank ends up figuring them out. Uh, Also not sure he's going to have the power. Um, to keep Tank uh, off of him once Tank gets going. Roly Romero, another young fighter, but uh, you are one of the people who thought, and there was uh, a judge who thought the same thing, you thought Roly was in lead at the time he got stopped. And I thought Roly was actually fighting well, and we saw his potential, and it just, like, whatever's happened to his career since has been what's happened to his career since, but... You know that was a that was an exciting fight. Roley wasn't. I don't. I don't remember how he was perceived going into that, but I remember that being interesting. And then Isak Cruz, obviously, before that, like Isak Cruz was actually the replacement for Roley the first time because Roley yeah. was supposed to get that fight. Um, and then Isak Cruz uh, ends up having the performance that makes a lot of people think that he's better than he was because Tank basically beat him while injured uh, by a narrow decision. And we've seen since that Isak Cruz, I, 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 people have called for a rematch for this, myself included at one point, but I, I think Tank beats him worse in a, re, in a rematch, especially considering what we've seen from Isak Cruz since. Yeah, I don't think that match even happens. I think at 140, there's better fights to make. Tank and Teofimo Lopez. Teofimo is going as far as making racial slurs to get that fight done. Um, Let me and, quickly go through the rest of the names. Yeah. Um, just, to, just so that we can Devin just, Haney. go on this. Um the rest of the names that Javante Davis has fought. So Mario Barrios before this, that was 140 fight. Um, Leo Santa Cruz, who came up in weight, who we mentioned. And I, I think Santa Cruz is very good too. He made event of the first card that I ever covered as a dude. Leo a Santa Cruz person. is a former champ. Yeah, he wasn't a champ at the weight class that he fought tank, but Leo is one of those dudes that has accolades. By the way, I thought Leo Santa Cruz was winning that fight when he got popped too. Um yeah. it just first, can you for- can you sustain tank's power? At, at, at the same time, right? Like you can box well and you can have skill, but if Tank Tank is accurate, he's not going to throw that much, but he's accurate and he's got that power. So can you take that power? And that's still one of the best knockouts of all time, I think. So I don't think this run of opponents is as bad as some of the Tank haters think, um, but it's also like there, there is a little element of like, 
there's something missing there. Like Isaac Cruz is good. Roley Romero is good. Um, probably better before that fight than he has been since. Hector Luis Garcia. Like these are all good to real good, like solid fighters. Ryan Garcia has the star power. There's just some like you want like a Shakur or a Lomachenko type of fight, like an elite. I don't think any of these guys that he fought there was elite necessarily, but honestly, we haven't gotten a ton of like elite versus elite fights anyway. This is why next week is such a rarity because, and then before that, the run of opponents is like, you know, Yuriokis Gamboa, who already had two losses at that point, Ricardo Nunez, Hugo Ruiz, like you go through the names, it's, it's mostly underwhelming, except for Jose Pedraza, who he had to beat to get his first title. And Jose Pedraza at that time was a champion, a super featherweight, top five in his weight class, undefeated. And um, he went on to have a, a really good career after, even though he lost his fight by a, a devastating knockout. That was another fight that Al covered. And that <laughs> Tank has ridiculous power, uh, especially in person. Miss Mona left a couple comments here about about the weight, uh, saying that Lamont Roach uh, has fought um, at 135 and 140 for over half of his fights. I don't think that's the case because just a quick quick scan through box rec he hasn't fought over 130 since 2017 which would be a long time there are some examples here of him fighting above the weight limit but for the most part like he's he's been at 130 for the most part of his career um but does also note that he will rehydrate to like 155 or so uh maybe that could be true but i mean he only has 10 knockouts in his career and <laughs> Uh, Tank also, we've seen Tank get popped, and he has a chin. So I, I don't, I don't know if the power that Lamont Rhodes is going to present is going to be an issue. So uh, yeah, and I don't think that's going to be his game plan, right? Like Lamont Rhodes is skilled, and um, I think he has a pretty decent chin against Tank. I don't know, but I actually think this is a good fight. Like I'm happy for Lamont Rhodes because I think this is going to be pretty entertaining, pay per view worthy. I don't, I don't know. Mm. But I mean that, I like David you said, Benavidez that's how it's feature. David Benavidez I on the co-feature. I believe so. Okay. Yeah, I believe so. So hopefully the card is going to be dope. Um, but nonetheless, let's get to some comments, Brian, uh, before we get up and out of here. You Height and just... reach advantage for Lamont Roach, by the way, also slightly. But I mean, against Tank, that hasn't quite mattered. <laughs> you know, because yeah. he he's he's not a tall dude. Um, but he. He doesn't get, a, we've said this, he doesn't get enough credit for his ring IQ, his boxing ability, which is why we want to see him in there with another elite fighter. And really, it's just Lomachenko, Shakur Stevenson, I think right now, are, are the guys you want to see the most. I, I would even want, I would even, like if Tank fought Devin Haney, Devin Haney would not do I'd this. But if that. Tank fought Devin Haney, like that would be entertaining regardless of where the weight class They would have to do it at 140, be. though. Which I, I think would be okay, but Tank would have to want to come up. Tank, I don't think Devin Tank, Haney wants that fight, yo. Tank. Tank would be fine. Tank would yeah. be just fine with Devin Haney's power. Something. I, I I don't I I don't think uh, Devin Haney wants that fight right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, he needs to re have that rematch with Ryan Garcia after he is trying to sue him. Uh, William Zabeda. William Zabeda is another lightweight who's undefeated, looking for a big fight. Who uh, I, I don't know what the perception will be of that, but um, that's a good fight. William Zapata is this literally just got announced. He's fighting Tevin Farmer uh, next month. Tevin Farmer, who I am one of those people who thought he probably should have gotten a, a better nod, a better decision uh, against Raymond Murataya, yes. but but in the end kind of tired out. So I kind of see why Murataya got the decision. But this is going to be an interesting test to see where William Zapata is at. But I think he's another name that we should, we should probably throw in tank mix because – He's one of the best lightweights in the world. And yeah. if he beats Tevin Farmer soundly, like, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be curious to see what he could do against Tank, assuming we can't get Shakur or Lomachenko. Yeah, I actually think that's a really, really good fight. Um, Hustle Man, Roach is a good solid fighter, but not enough to beat Tank. Yeah, uh, let us know who you're going to be taking in that fight. It's set for December 14th, if I'm not mistaken, um, in Houston. Uh, let's go over to Mark. Tank had one fight at 126. Roach is skilled, but not enough power or skill for Tank. I agree. So this is a fight where I think consensus, a lot of people are going to be taking Tank for this fight, and they're not looking at it as Roach being one of those guys that can upset him. But it's boxing. Anything can happen. But I, I would say it's a stay-busy fight, and hopefully, 
hopefully we'll get Tank Aloma or Shakur, or even just like you said, William Zapata for sure. Um, this is an interesting one. I don't think this happens though. Andy Cruz. Ooh, that's a good fight. So along those lines, how good was Roley you think leading up to this fight? Or I guess a better way to ask this is, is Keyshawn Davis now better than Roley was prior to fighting Javante Davis? Yes. Like, I think... I, like, I, if, I, if, it, tank, if Tank fights, they're not going to do this. They're not going to do this because I think we're, we're you know... It's too risky, it's, dude. It's too yeah. risky. But, like, if 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 it came across that it's like, oh, he's going to fight Keyshawn Davis in, in, in 2025, I would be very intrigued. Oh, I still think Tank would win that fight, but I'd be more intrigued than if he were to fight most of these other dudes. Uh, I'm looking for odds on Javante Davis because I feel like he's going to be a big favorite. I'm not seeing anything yet. I'll report so, back. So do you know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of like a Jerron Ennis fighting a bud. Like it's just not going to happen. Mm. Like that's the risk for it. Right? So I, I don't know. I still would take Tank in that fight. Keyshawn is very talented. Uh, we've seen some holes in Keyshawn's fighting, but he, he's gotten better. But, but nonetheless... Uh, I love Andy Cruz, though. I love Andy Cruz. Um, I don't think he gets that shot against Tank, but he's going to be a problem, a problem in the division for sure. Uh, let's go over to... Keyshawn Davis has Gustavo Lemos next month in a card that I, th I think... Lemos is, is a good fight, dude. Yeah, I think Troy Isley, uh, who top rank is also pushing in that <laughs> that middleweight weight class that, honestly, like Troy Isley could probably win a title soon in that weight class that weight class is, will. is not great and i think troy Ives is actually one of the more skilled dudes in there so let's see we got comments on hey, this. this is my favorite comment so far why the hell is boots fighting karen again Ain't nobody <laughs> trying to see that <laughs> ibf the ibf is the answer karen went on a little run after their fight they made him the mandatory and um i think pam rodriguez is on this card <laughs> He is, I'm, yeah. Bam, like, Bam is fighting on that card, which is interesting because we're not going to get him in El Gallo anymore. That card is ugh. like I just I I'm going to no, watch it. I'm going to watch it. Like I, I think December has some good fights. Yeah. Do y'all want a post fight show for that? Because I, I I don't want a post fight show for that. Yeah, I, I want to ask the audience. Like I don't I don't want to do a Boots Karen. I'm good on that post fight show necessarily. I'll do it if the people want it. I'll, look, whatever the people want, I'll do. We it. should do Within Tank reason. and Lamont Roach though. Within we should reason. do Tank and Lamont Roach. Yeah, you want no, that any, post fight show? I feel any, like any Tank fight. We're, we're we're trying to do one. Um, we're absolutely doing one for be better be of Bevol, and then after that, I'm not. Uh, we'll, we'll see about Regis Pro Ray Jack Catterall. I, I think we should do one for that. Yeah, if, if we're able to. Yeah. Um, um that's, that's gonna that... be UK time. That's coming up. That's the sneaky good fight that's gonna be at the end of the month. That got pushed back. It's supposed to be in August. Please, Regis, don't let me down. Um <laughs> <laughs> that's so that's all I'm gonna say. If Regis lets me down this fight, I'm gonna be a little bit upset. Uh, I think he he's got a lot of lot to prove um to the haters and doubters. Uh, a chip on his shoulder, I feel like. Brian, any final thoughts before we get up and out of here? Yeah, I think if we're power ranking who we want to see a uh, tank fight the most, we should we should actually do a little top five here. Um, right. Do your thing. We should, we should actually do a little top five here. I would say I want to see Shakur the most. Lomachenko second. I actually legitimately think, and even though I would say William Cepeda is more worthy if he can beat Tevin Farmer, I want to see Keyshawn Davis. And the the third most out of everybody here. He's, if we're using, and Ring Magazine has its issues, but let's say if we're using these rankings as a bar, he's seventh right now. And I think he's better than that in the weight class uh, because he's behind Raymond Murataya. And I think he's better than Murataya. I think that's a fight top rank should make, though. Like that, that should be the next step for um, Keyshawn Davis and the winner could fight for the WBO because it's top rank and they'll fight for the WBO. Fourth to me is Andy Cruz. I yeah, don't think he's that's... good. I'm, I'm ranking in terms on, intrigue okay of, of tanks next fights he's i'm not saying he's already the fourth best lightweight in the world but if 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 tank versus andy cruz got announced <laughs> i would be more intrigued than if it was tank versus with all due respect raymond murataya or you know some of these other dudes and i'll put William i do Peta think murataya okay so 
I here's how I have a love and hate relationship with Murataya because I feel like I've wanted to see so much more for him and mm -hmm. there was so much hype on him and I feel like he hasn't lived up to it but that's a fight I wouldn't be mad about so I, I love Andy Cruz and Tank I just I don't see it happening but I love the intrigue because that's a fight that I think Andy Cruz could win yeah I think I, that's I, a fight Andy Cruz could win to be real with you like that's how high I am on Andy Cruz I want to see Keyshawn Davis uh win his next fight, fight Raymond Murataya, and the winner of that could fight Dennis Berenchik for the WBO. And then we could start talking about super fights with Tank. All right. So my Tank list for intrigue, and this is intrigue only. Number one is him and Lomachenko. I still think that's arguably one of the best fights that we could get yeah. because Loma seems to be in rare form as well. And I think that is the fight to make. I think that's a blockbuster fight, pay-per-view fight. Number two, Shakur Stevenson. Number three. If we're not talking weight classes, Devin Haney, uh -huh. number four, Teofimo Lopez, uh -huh. and number five, give me a rematch. And I, like the weight thing is an issue, but I want to see a rematch with him and Ryan Garcia without the weight train. Mm. And yeah, if, if we're, we're, taking, <laughs> we're taking, we're taking, you were thinking more weight class, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I thinking was thinking like, in, if we're talking intrigue, yeah. that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> so, um, but yours is more likely. But if we're talking like weight sure. class and all that, I actually love the Williams Zapata fight. I think Williams Zapata needs a fight like that. He'll come to fucking fight, man. I yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I would probably place Andy Cruz at number five. Um, I, I also like him and Raymond Murataya. I hate to say it, but I, I think that's a good fight. I think Tig wins that fight. Yeah, but I, I just, I, I think Murataya is another. Like, I don't think he's. I think Frank Martin could beat Raymond Murataya. Um, I think Lamont Roach could probably beat Raymond Murataya, actually. Yeah. Uh, like, I just, I just, like, I've seen him struggle multiple fights that I, I don't feel like he should have struggled against. And I hold Tevin Farmer in high regard. Like, I think Tevin Farmer is great, but he's also, like, he, he took a long layoff, long layoff. Um, so, like, he's, I don't know if he'll get back to, like, where he was basically pre Jojo Diaz again, uh, where he looked like one of the, most skilled boxers in these lighter weight classes but at the same time like you know we'll see how he pushes william zapata and like he's trying to get into this lightweight mix also and if william zapata struggles in that fight because tevin farmer is a tough fighter to look good against because oh, how yeah. he is stylistically like if if tevin farmer and i might sprinkle a little something on this because i bet on him to beat raymond Murataya, i might look at Te uh, tevin farmer to win uh by decision or even by split or majority decision uh, i'm not gonna lie to you i think i point. might place I, I'm going to rock with you because I want Raymond Murataya to live up to the hype. I really like him as a fighter, but Tevin Farmer is a really tough fight, and Raymond has disappointed me. Yeah, and you know and what's going to happen is if, if Tevin Farmer wins that fight. He's not going to win it on the cards, though. No, it, let's say he does. <laughs> then we're finally going to get Tank versus Tevin Farmer, which should have happened in, like, 2016 because they were talking shit, hating each other, like, publicly and all these things. And that fight should have got made. And there was there were actually people that thought Tevin Farmer would have outboxed Tank at the time because Tank was so young. Um, listen, it, it would be totally, like, just completely boxing for that to happen. But I'll tell you what, if Tevin, if Tevin beats William Cepeda, if he, if he scores that upset, I think that Amazon – and PBC, or they're going to run to make that fight because it's like, oh wait, we don't have to put him in against one of the one of the like more dangerous sort of uh, quote unquote opponents. We could actually sell this grudge match that should have happened a long ass time ago. It'd be so Story boxing to be, be crazy. to that. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, by the way, let's get to two more comments, Brian. Let's get up and out of here because this has been more than an hour show. Our longest show ever, I think. This is uh, definitely our longest show ever. Good front of the show, hustle man. Tank, uh, who 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 he would like for Tank would be Loma, Shakur, Devin, Teo. In a way, at one thirty or one twenty eight catch weight, <laughs> uh, I still think that's a dream fight. I don't think that happens. I think we get, yeah. I just I think in a way is going to cap out at one twenty six. I don't I don't know if he ever moves up to one thirty, but there's weight classes for a reason. Um, yeah. If he gets to one thirty, I don't know where Tank is going to be at at that point either. I don't yeah. see Tank hanging around like that. I feel like he'll 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 get out relatively early. That's just a guess. Yeah, that's what I think as well. But I, I think he still needs that one fight where people don't question his resume. Preferably people, both Shakur and, Lo, and Loma. I think I think he has a chance to beat both of them. Tough fights though. Toughest fights. And if he has if he has one of those guys on his resume, 
I think he's set. You know what I mean? He gets the win, and then we stop talking. You know, people start talking smack because I still think Tank is the best lightweight in the world. By the way, if you like the content, hit that like and subscribe button. If you have already, we do appreciate you. Also, you can find us on the audio side. And if you got a couple of minutes, leave a rate and review. Give us a five star because I mean, why not?